What's up, everyone? Welcome back for a brand new episode of Collider Ladies Night Pre-Party. I'm so excited. I'm obsessed with bodies, bodies, bodies. And I have my Holla Herald here. And oh my, you are a force in that movie. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean it. So the great thing about Ladies Night Pre-Party is it gives us an opportunity to get to know you a little. And every single episode starts here. What is the movie, the performance, or personal experience that first made you say, I have to be an actor? Okay, this is a great question. I'm happy that you asked this because I was talking about this the other night and, and being like, I don't know who to say. But I discovered it is Bernadette Peters in Into the Woods on Broadway. And I watched the filmed version as a kid. I'm a, I'm a big m tier. I'm a musical theater buff. And that was the one that I said, oh, I must be her. <laughs> so I think that's actually what started the, the chaos that has been my journey. That is an excellent choice right there. So this goes into the, the little bit of research I was doing. I saw you had a lot of theater credits early on. Mm -hmm. So initially was the dream to be on the stage or did you always know you wanted to incorporate screen work as well? Film and TV was not even in my ether until I went to college. And even then, nobody assumed I would do it. It wasn't really on my radar. Um, I started in musical theater when I was six years old, and I did it religiously throughout all the younger grades and through high school. I did all my community theater stuff and all my school stuff. And um, when it came time to go to college, I was like, well, I'm going to go for musical theater and that's it. I did that at Carnegie Mellon. And then in our final year, we have um, like one on screen class. And it was essentially like glorified self taping. And they were like, you're going to be doing a lot of this. And I said, okay, whatever. Moved to New York. I started working with my manager, who is mostly LA based and she's mostly film and television. So I was getting a lot of stuff from her on that side. And um, just because I think purely the like, amount, the volume of work in TV and film is so much greater than it is on stage. I was getting a lot more attention there and the diversity of stories that are being told on screen as opposed to on stage. Um, and I sort of, I was like, oh, these paychecks are so cute compared to what people are getting on the stage. And, oh, I don't have to do eight shows a week. And I, you know what I mean? Um, and I just, I, I liked it. And then when I got industry, I, I think I really understood my style of acting and the way I like to approach character and performance is actually better suited for TV and film just because it's emotional and intimate. And on the stage, you have to be huge. And I'm a pretty small person. So I had a hard time with that, actually. <laughs> Oh my, I have so many follow-up questions. The first thing I wanted to ask was, you said your manager specialized more so in film and television. How did you wind up with someone who specialized in that area when you were originally planning to go to stage work? Right. Well, she is, you know, she can and does do all of it, but because that was her background, she'd started as an agent first. Um, she was just better versed. But honestly, I think she just saw something in me that intrigued her, something special and obviously something transferable. Um, and I was so excited that she was interested in me because I kind of was like, why? <laughs> um, but yeah, she really believed in my ability across the board. And of course, the more experience I got with auditioning and taping, my uh, style started to adjust and became more appropriate for film and TV. And she yeah, I love I love Laura. Laura Gibson, big shout out. She just had the most faith in my abilities across all mediums. And it is our goal to return to the stage when the time is right. You've got all the time in the world and I am willing to <laughs> bet it's going to happen. All right, looking at school now or rather graduating school, because I know sometimes it could be scary for someone. You're in that school setting. It's kind of a safe environment to explore. But then you graduate and it's like, oh, wow, I'm just jumping into the deep end now. So what was yeah. step one for you when you graduated? Step one for, you know, building a career as an actor. I mean, step one, get a job. <laughs> <laughs> a job, any job, you know what I mean? I think we're all sort of desperate to go once school finishes. We're coming off the excitement of the potential to get to do it. So now it's like, go do it, go get it. And um, it's hard because you're li quite literally competing with everyone else in the world and you're the newest and the youngest and don't nobody know you or trust you. So um, that was the first step was just to find a job. And then of course, like to live, I had to get like, a job job to, 
to pay my rent and and feed myself. Um, and I moved to New York right after college. So I was just, you know, getting acquainted with the city and something that I am grateful that I under that I always understood was that I was going to work at some point I was going to get a job it may not have been right away I was quite lucky it happened pretty soon um but I knew I was going to work so I really just wanted to be happy in my life whether or not I was working so I you know made friends and got acclimated in the city and just you know tried to in- enjoy and appreciate the small things before I got a big job. It's also like a grounding thing because you get rejected 99 times out of 100 every single day until they someone finally says yes. Here's a question I like asking a lot. Can you give us one audition high and then also one audition low and tell us how you overcame that low? Yeah, I'll start with the low, the the biggest low. I was uh, doing a tape for this like sci-fi series sometime maybe 2018 late 2018 early 2019 and um, I heard back from I think I did two tapes initially they gave me notes and I redid a tape and then they were like the director loves you they want to meet with you and so I met with this director who was like look you're the one you're the one um, but we have to bring options to the network. You know how that goes. And I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Having no idea what he was talking about. (laughs) Um, And so we worked on it again. I taped three more times and they were like, the test is tomorrow. It's going to be you. It's all going to be fine. And of course, by this time I'm thinking about like, oh, I'm moving to Atlanta. I'm going to have this amount of money. Then I'm going to be able to do this. And you know, you start to like make plans when there's actually no guarantee of the thing happening. And because I thought it was going to be me, they said it was going to be me. And then the test happened. And I think two hours later, they were like, Hey, so it didn't go your way. And that was crushing. Um, And when I saw who they did cast, um, it was like a dish. It was kind of like I had a weird mid year after graduating crisis, because at the time I had a shaved head and I was super androgynous and almost exclusively going out for queer roles and like leaning into that. And then I saw who they cast and she was like feminine and elegant with all this hair and like makeup on. And I was like, do I have to assimilate to be seen? You know what I mean? So I had a bit of a crisis. I started growing my hair out and all my friends were like, are you okay? (laughs) Um, So that sucked. However, I didn't get that. And so then I auditioned for industry. and a, a, like a month later. And so the high is that I auditioned for industry. I met with the writers. I met with Lena Dunham. I flew to Wales and I got the role like three days later. So that was a pretty good one. It's meant to be. And as shitty as that other situation sounds, that sounds like a whole bunch of people you probably don't want to be working with anyway. So two silver linings to that scenario. Right, right. And that was, I had always said, you know, whatever is meant for me will find me and whatever is not is not. And that's okay. And after that first thing happened, I was like, nothing's meant for me. I'm crap. I'll never get cast. (laughs) And then industry happened. And I was like, this is why I didn't get that series because then I wouldn't have been able to do the thing that I was truly meant to do. So it all works out. There's hope, you know what I mean? In the darkest moments, there's always a reason. So true. It's hard to remind yourself of that sometimes, but you always have to because it is true. So industry now, for that one, what is something about working on that show that makes you think, I am so glad that this is my first big starring gig as a series (laughs) regular? Something about, you know, the material, your coworkers, the environment on set, anything at all? I mean, honestly, all of those things. I... I believe that it's rare, although I've been very lucky to have this experience with almost every set I've ever been on, but truly like, to me, that is a perfect script. Our writers are so intelligent. um, And as an actor, it gives you all of the playing field to go. Like there's no place we can't go in that script because it's, it's so well thought out. So that's a good reason. Also playing a young black banker as a woman and a foreign body in a place um and being the kind of person that I am I was really excited uh, about like the introduction not the introduction but the the broadening of the idea of representation because I truly believe that like you know diversity and representation is not about checking boxes it's about it's about putting true stories 
in the media on the screen and celebrating them. And I understand that I don't fit into any of the like archetypal stereotype black female characters that are out there in the world. And just like me being who I am, I thought that would was gonna expand the idea of what black women on screen look like. Um, and you know, whether or not you like Harper, that's not the point. She's a person and she's black and a woman. So it, it just adds to the conversation. So that was really cool. Also, everyone I work with is a gem. We love each other. We have a group chat. We, you know, we're very, very, very close. And we kind of all started it in the same place, like scared beyond imposter syndrome. How are we going to do this? You know what I mean? So it, um, it bonds you in a, in a big way. If the vibe between that ensemble is anything like what I saw at Comic-Con with you and the Bodies, Bodies, Bodies cast, you are, you're just like living your best life right now. Bro, I am so lucky. I really am. And we are just, we are just that way with all of the like British, like cutting humor. <laughs> we just roast each other like all the time. Um, yeah, it's great. I love them. They're the best. Speaking of roasting each other, I don't think I was more delighted uh, out of all of the Comic-Con interviews that I did than watching you all basically throw each other under the bus with the slasher movie superlative game. I was just tickled the entire time. <laughs> oh my God. I was genuinely like, I hope that like after I have this whole Comic-Con moment that people are like, she's a poser. Get her out of Comic-Con. She doesn't know any of these things. <laughs> I appreciate from afar. It's not that like, I don't love it and it's great. I just don't, I can't contribute to the conversation in a way that I wish I could. I hope I didn't embarrass myself. You much. contributed to that conversation exactly how you needed to. And like, that's the great. exciting thing about Comic-Con and other, like there's a million different conventions. There's horror conventions. There's super fans right. of everything out there. So the fact that all these right. things exist and people can experience them for the first time only, you know, sure. runs their understanding of pop culture in exciting ways. So right. I right. think you should return and explore even more because it's a wonderful Thank time. You. Yeah, it was great. I loved it. I'm glad you had a good time. Bodies, bodies, bodies now. I'll start with non-spoiler questions, but we will get into spoilers because I was just dying to do it last time and we couldn't. Mm -hmm. So first, what is the biggest difference between your expectations for what working on the project would be like and then what it turned out to be when you hit set and you met everyone and you kind of got into Helena's uh, shooting style? I think the biggest like wake up call was like you're actually in the hurricane. I think when you read a script that is so exciting and intriguing and moving, you're not, until you get to a certain place in your career, you're not immediately being like, this says they're outside in a hurricane. That's gonna mean my body is gonna be outside in a hurricane. I just wasn't thinking about the reality of that situation. And because of course, Helena is, has a theater background, so everything is super real. And our cameraman, Jasper, was, doing like roaming single masters we do it take after take after take and it was real every time there was no like let's put the fx rain in this shot that was not happening um i was just like smacked by how by the elements by how real it was for all of us and and how many times we had to do it in the middle of the night in the cold <laughs> um but it was worth it it was all worth it because the film is it's beautiful what they because it's so real it is really scary to watch it really makes all the difference on this one. And I feel like you couldn't create that kind of like frenetic energy any other way, but then capturing it all just like that. <laughs> all right. So to build on something we were discussing at Comic-Con with everybody's, you know, unique approaches to their work of everyone in the Bodies, Bodies, Bodies ensemble, which two cast members would you say have the most polar opposite ways of getting the work done where, you know, when you share scenes with these two people, you know, you're going to get two entirely different acting experiences. Hmm. Fabulous question. Rachel, working with Rachel brings a lot of unpredictability in the sense that she's very keen on improv and has so much of it and was given the latitude so you could expect to not expect what she was gonna do on the day when the camera was rolling you know what I mean um and then juxtaposed to someone like Lee who was like here's what I'm doing here's the plan and then in moments where he had ideas and was playful we already knew what was gonna happen it wasn't a surprise 
we got to play, but it wasn't a surprise. Whereas Rachel was like, you just let her go and see what happens. <laughs> I like can't get over this cast. I have so many other non-spoiler questions, but I don't want to run out of time before we jump into the spoiler. So I'm just going to do it now. Great. Anything I ask from here on out, you could talk about whatever you want. Everybody should have seen Bodies, Bodies, Bodies at this point because <laughs> it's awesome. All right. So again, I know Helena let you guys improv quite a bit on set. Of everything you shot, which scene changed the most on set? I would, oh, this is, this is hard. What changed the most on set? The final, the final blowout between um, most of us uh, when uh, we're like, you're the killer, you're the killer. Jordan has the gun. Rachel gets shot, you know, all of that. Um, That one, there was a lot of improv in that one. And that was a 13 page long scene that we shot the whole thing every time. Um, Right. And there was a lot of physicality in that one because it starts with us sort of, you know, confronting each other. And then it goes to like a dog pile on the couch and then a dog pile on the floor. And then someone gets shot and then there's screaming and then there's going and then going up the stairs to come off the top of the, You know what I mean? So that one, there was quite a bit of improv. And when we staged it on the day, we made a lot of discoveries about what would work and what wouldn't work. Uh, just because it was so long. So that one, I think, was the most exciting for me to shoot. Okay. So during our last conversation, Helena wouldn't tell me what it was. But when I asked her, like, more broadly, what changed the most from script to screen, she said she couldn't say anything because it was spoilery. Was that that the particular oh. thing or was it something else? No, I think it's something else. And that something else is, I think the movie is perfect as it is. But I will say that big change, when I first heard about it, I was like, damn, that would have been amazing. Um, but that didn't happen. But it's okay, because how it is. Can you tell us great. what it is? Because we could talk spoilers now. Uh, I guess so. Is that considered a spoiler? I don't know. Am I going to get, well, I don't know. Even I'll if get... it is, you're in a safe space now. Everyone who's still watching right. this interview has seen the movie. Okay, so if I get in trouble, I'm sorry, A24, I love you. Um. In the first iteration of the script that I read, at the very end, when B asks Sophie for her phone and Sophie um, says no, they fight. They're actually upstairs. They're on like a top level. They fight and the phone like goes out the window. And I think Sophie like jumps or reach, reaches to get the phone, flies out the window and then is impaled on some sort of sculpture so that the last person standing is B. Wow. That yeah. changes. A l I, I agree right. with you. I think it's perfect as is, but holy yeah. shit, that's a different <laughs> ending. <laughs> yeah, super different ending. I was like, oh, that's going to be crazy. Um, but yeah, it, changed, it changes it a lot. And I think it is perfect the way it is now. But I think that is probably the biggest scriptural change that happened between then and now smart change i like that one <laughs> all right for for jordan in particular now she's pretty intense throughout the entire film but towards the beginning i kind of found myself thinking if i were in this situation and i was afraid of a killer running around the house i would want someone like her there who would stand up and take control but then that slowly evolves into actually i don't want her anywhere near me because like she's <laughs> scary now and she's just as much of a threat so what was it like kind of having that natural evolution from Jordan feeling one way to where she winds up at the end of the movie. I actually think that is all due, that's nothing in my perf my thought process in the performance changed. I was always business protection, uh, being ahead of whoever's killing all these people type thing. And I think because people started dropping off and then the, suspicious, the suspicion rises in everyone because of like the drugs, the drama, all of it that everyone else started to perceive Jordan as dangerous because you still don't know who the killer is. You know what I mean? Um, and she's obviously one of the most violent. So I think that's really just like part of the edit and the film and everyone else supporting me <laughs> and making me look like I'm the one who's going to kill everyone. But truly for me, it was the same motivation the whole time, maybe just doubling down. Well, you, you crushed that evolution on your own, by the way, but it is a perfect example of like all the elements of the filmmaking process coming together to serve one another. 
I love that. All right. Tell me everything about the uh, the banister staircase stunt now. Actually, for Jordan, was that always the way she went out or did that ever change? Nope. That was that's the OG death of Jordan. And when I read that, I was like, that's the coolest thing. That's so cool. Um, so um, on the first day when we were doing that, that stunt, they said, oh, you're going to have a body double. And I didn't really understand how it was going to work, because what they said was the camera will catch the fight at the top of the stairs. And then the camera will slowly pan over the banister and catch you uh, on the table. And I was like, is this stunt person going to crash into the table? Like, is it going to be like a sugar table? Like, how are they going to do this? Here's what they did. The My stunt double, D, was on a harness attached to a big, like, rope that went down the banister and then and then attached underneath the wall. And there was a person stood there. She flies over the banister. That's all natural and real. And then the rope catches her and she swings this way and a person catches her body. And I'm just laid on the table the whole time. So when we were filming it, I was laid there watching and I'd hear her go, ah! and I'd watch her come flying over the banister right to me. And every time it was scary. Every time it was scary. <laughs> um, even though I knew she wasn't going to hit me, but truly like her foot was like, <sighs> and I was like, they're struggling. And, you, and I could see the camera turning the, the corner and coming down and so that's how we did that it was so cool so smart i love movie magic so so much right <laughs> I, just, I can't get enough of it i think i have to let you go soon but a couple of very quick rapid fire questions for you because okay. we also like to do the get to know you thing on ladies night so very random questions here first one is if you could be on the game show of your choice what show would you pick and could you actually win it oh uh, ooh, I'd like to be on Love Island. Does that count? Yeah, it counts. Yeah, I would love to be on Love Island. I don't think I would last very long, but I'm just like a, a mega fan. Um, yeah, I think it would be fun to be on Love Island. <laughs> I feel like all of those getaway shows, it's like sign me up for that, but I'd probably right? only get a couple days worth of the, the, the fun there and then I'd get booted yeah. off. Yeah. Me too, me too, but the flight over would be great. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, let's do a little trivia. So one of my favorite things to do is look at someone's IMDb trivia page because there's always like really weird random facts on that. So if you could add a really random fact about yourself to that page, what would you pick? Um, when I wiggle my ears, my whole scalp moves, like my whole head of my whole hair moves. I mean, I have to ask for a demonstration now. Well, <laughs> I knew as soon as I said it, I was like, dang it. I'm not sure if it will go because my hair is so tight, but I will attempt. I can see it a little. I'm, just, my ears, I'm like but really impressed by the ear wiggling. <laughs> I, <think laughs> I, can even do that. I haven't done that in so long. That's so funny. Yeah. When my hair's not so tight, the whole thing does this, which is quite funny. What is the most recent show you've binge watched? The Bear FX. Brilliant. Everyone go watch it. It's amazing. Oh, I need to do that binge. I keep hearing about it. It is high up on yeah. the list right now. All right, I'll yeah. give you two more here. What is something that you absolutely can't be on set without? Like a thing you need to have with you, whether it's your, you know, sides, a certain snack, something to pass the time in between scenes? Mm hmm Water. I love water so much i know that's sort of boring but like honestly water and i go to the bathroom a lot but it's important to stay hydrated when you're like expelling so much energy and i'm very much that person like did you drink your water today <laughs> yeah. i'm the, the mama bear of us of us for sure every single time i ask that question during one of these interviews all it reveals is that my guests are a whole lot smarter than me all my body was made of during Comic-Con in particular was Red Bull, coffee, and beer. That was it. Wow. And you're here to tell the tale. I'm shocked. How did I survive? <laughs> I swear I'll drink water this week. All right. Last one here. <laughs> if you could learn a new skill or about a different profession through a role, what would you pick and why? Oh, I would. It would have to be uh, finance, financing. I would love to be able to actually do that and understand it because I feel like if I could, that would be really beneficial. It sounds boring, but honestly, incredibly resourceful. And then you could like do my own 
I don't know if they do their own taxes, but you know what I mean? Like you could make some money and trade and do all the things. That would be cool. That's what I always say about college. I'm really grateful for all the subjects I got to learn about, but they probably should have had real basic finance courses in there because I think I would have benefited mean, from that quite a bit. Yes, yes. I would have loved to have had that knowledge going into industry. <laughs> All right, I gotta let you go, but congratulations on everything you've accomplished, and in particular, Bodies, 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 which is so my kind of movie. I love it so much, and everyone out there, please go see it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. So good to see you.